Saw UMC. Um, before we go ahead and start our worship, um, let's please join me in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you that we have this time to worship you, as I always say, because there's just so many things to be grateful for, and even when we're in a valley, it's good to have that perspective of knowing what we have, knowing what, it's even better to know that even when we're in a valley that we know that there are still blessings to be counted. So I just pray that we just truly count our blessings and that tonight um, we draw closer to you and just worship you and praise you and just lay whatever it is on our hearts before you. In your name we pray, amen.
There's a table that you've prepared for me in the presence of my enemies. It's your body and your blood you've shed for me. This is how I fight my battles. Look like 
Lord, I will just bow down. I'm just gonna stay still. I'm just gonna stay still. I'm just gonna stay still. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, help us to stay still. Because when we stay still, we hear you the most clearly. I know it's so easy, especially during this time, to feel like there's so much to do and there's so much to get taken care of and all those things. Well, I'm not saying to... <laughs> not handle those things, but sometimes we can get so caught up in all of that, all the, all the hustle and bustle of this time of year and forget to be still and listen to you for truly, there's a point to the holidays. There's a point to the hustle and bustle. There is a why. And that is just, you know, love. So let us remember that in your name we pray. Amen. On the eleventh day, at the eleventh hour of the eleventh month, the World War II was declared over, at least in the European theater. And today is the day that we like to remember and honor those who sacrificed so much for us and our country, the men and the women in our armed services that chose to serve God by loving their neighbor through their service to our country. And I hope that you take a, time, take a moment to remember and honor all those that made sure that we were able to be free. Welcome. I hope that your week is going really well. Again, this is Veterans Day, and I wanted to take a moment that, to recognize all of those who served. And at the end, we will do a video for all of those that we have been blessed to have here at Kennesaw United Methodist Church. But today, we're going to talk about Joshua. I have a fondness for Joshua. When I was young and, and living at home with my parents, my mother would make little signs to put over our doors. Um, in the fashion of the Old Testament saying to write the scriptures on your doorposts. And one of the scriptures that she had placed over our doorstep was from Joshua chapter 24. And I'm going to read it to you. But the part that she put on our doorstep, on our doorpost was, choose this day whom you will serve. And so that's really kind of where we're going to focus in this. But I invite you to turn with me to Joshua chapter 24. I'm going to read verses 1 through 3a. That's always fun. And then 14 through 25. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, of the, the heads and the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons, Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. 
Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. Now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods, for it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along the way, and at that, all the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore we will also serve the Lord, for he is our God." But Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God, and he will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm, and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, you are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. He said, then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, the Lord our God we will serve and in, in him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made statutes and ordinance for them at Shechem. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'm going to give a little background, a little context here. So the Israelites had been traveling with Moses in the desert for 40 years, and Joshua was one of the spies who had spied out the promised land and said, hey, this is a good place, we need, we, and we can take it. Let's go do it. And we know that ultimately the Israelites decided that they were too frightened and didn't trust God enough to do it. And so they had to wander around in the desert for 40 years while the generation of doubters died. Everyone over the age of 20, with the exception of Caleb and Joshua, died in the desert. So we know that Joshua was right around 60 in his 60s maybe, maybe a little older, at the time that they come to the promised land a second time. And here, at this moment in this scripture, Joshua is at the end of his life. He knows that his time is soon, and he's making sure that the Israelites, the children of Israel, have decided that they're going to serve the Lord, and that they're going to put away the foreign gods. Joshua is 110 years old when he died. They're in the promised land. They've conquered as much of it as they're going to conquer in this time span. But when you read through Joshua, it makes it seem like it happened in just a year or two. But if you think about the fact that Joshua when it was probably in his 60s and he was 110 when he died, when this speech was delivered... It took them a long time to conquer that land. So here they are. They're in the promised land. Joshua's like, all right, all right. Y'all need to make a promise here. This is what we're going to do. He's like, you've, you've served these other gods. It's time to put them away. But if you don't want to, if you would rather serve all these other gods, the ones from beyond the Euphrates, the ones from Egypt, or the ones from the people here in this land, choose today that that's what you're going to do. And they say, no, 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 we're, we're going we're gonna to choose to serve the Lord. 
There's a little, t little spoiler alert. You get into Judges and you find out that they don't always serve the Lord. That there are many times when they fall away from God and find themselves in a bit of a sticky mess. They always call, come back and call on God and God always comes back and rescues them. And so Joshua kind of knows this. He, he's traveled with Israelites for a long time. He knows that they're stubborn. He knows that they're stiff-necked. He's seen them in the wilderness, and he knows how many times they've walked away and come back. And he's like, you can't do it. You haven't done it yet. And if you don't do it, and you say you're going to, and you go back on your word... At some point, God's patience is going to run thin, and he's going to destroy you. And you ain't got Moses here to say, hold on, God. Hold on. These are your people. You don't want to give yourself a bad name. Moses ain't here to do that for you anymore. So, you probably aren't going to be successful. And they're like, no, 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 we can do it. We, we, we're sure we can do it. Joshua says, all right then, but your witness is against yourself. But in this moment, when Joshua tells them to choose this day who they're going to serve, he's challenging them. He's challenging them to choose what sort of community they're going to be. What sort of people they're going to be. But he knows, again, that they're going to mess up. And making this promise, making this claim, choosing this day that they're going to serve the God who brought them out of Egypt, you're going to mess up. And you're going to look back on this moment. And this is going to be a witness against you. You're witnessing against yourself. We're asked at times, we're asked at some point in our lives to choose this day whom we're going to serve. We have the same option that the Israelites did. We have the chance to choose other gods. And many times we do. But if we claim to follow Jesus, we have chosen this day whom we're going to serve. And we become witnesses against ourselves. Now, yes, salvation is by faith alone. Absolutely, there is nothing that we can do to earn it. God is the primary agency in salvation. But the community, and other individuals also serve as mediators of our salvation. Self-salvation is not a biblical concept. It's not a biblical perspective. Joshua's challenge was to the community for them to choose what sort of community they were going to be. He wasn't just asking each individual leader for themselves. Because Joshua says, choose this day whom you're going to serve. But as for me and my household, Joshua chose for his household, we are going to serve the Lord. God is the primary agent in our salvation. And it is only by faith alone, but it is the community and the individuals that help show us what that's going to look like. And... In, this, in the South, it's, and not in some other areas of the country, it's, we talk about asking Jesus into our heart. As Methodists, we say that moment of justification, which is the same thing, being born again, is a moment in time, and it seems so individual. But if we claim our identity as Christians, followers of the risen Christ, do our actions witness for or against us? If we say that we follow Jesus, if we say that we walk in his footsteps, 
Do our actions prove that? Again, the Bible has no concept of individual autonomy existing apart from the community. That's just not a thing that happened in those times. Community was how you survived. And we see time and time again Jesus reaching out to the people that the community has pushed away onto the margins to bring them back into community. But when we claim, and when we claim Christ for ourselves, when we claim that identity as Christian, we become part of a larger community because salvation is a communal and relational activity. When we do that, though, salvation is by faith alone. But after that, how do we show our gratitude, our, our, our thanksgiving for the salvation that God has mediated for us through the community? Do we obey the law of love? The Israelites had 613 laws to follow. All of them, every last one of them, could be categorized in two ways. Jesus said it. All of the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments, loving God and loving others. Do we witness against ourselves when we say we're Christian because we're not following the law of love? Choose this day whom you will serve. Interestingly enough, Joshua doesn't give them the option of serving no one. We are going to serve someone or something. But we get to choose who that is. We get to choose what sort of community we're going to be. We're going to choose what sort of community we're going to be in. We're going to mess up. We're going to witness against ourselves. But here's the good news. Just the way the children of Israel messed up time and time again, God continued to come to their rescue. We're going to mess up. We're going to disobey the law of love. But Jesus Christ died for our sins. And he rose again to give us the same opportunity that the children of Israel had. All we have to do is ask. Call out to God and say, rescue us. And he will come and give us another chance. Another chance to choose who we're going to serve. Another chance to obey the law of love. Another chance to turn our witness from against us to for us. Because his grace is always there and always available to us. Let's pray. Gracious God, we choose this day whom we're going to serve. We choose. And I can't speak for all of those who are watching, but I choose serve you. I choose for myself and my family. I choose to be part of a community that loves you and obeys the law of love. Open the hearts and minds of all those who are watching tonight. Draw them close to you so that when they choose, they choose you. Amen. And amen. As promised, we're going to do a video of all of the people from Kennesaw United Methodist Church who have served in our military, who have chosen to serve God by loving their neighbors through serving their country, who sacrificed their family time and other aspects of their lives, and some even sacrificed their lives so that we have 
the freedom to choose this day whom we are going to serve. for one more song as we close tonight with Build My Life. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you
my life I will commit. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, band. It was beautiful. I hope that your week goes well. I know that we live in strange times and chaotic times. But still, choose this day whom you will serve, whether it's God or some other God with a little g. May the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit Go with us as we choose this day whom we're going to serve. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>